Rogers from Chicago, and home to Doug Rock. You want to help me? <laughs> For Doug Rock, the presence of uranium in Fallujah comes as no surprise. This former high-ranking officer served more than 35 years in the U.S. Army, in particular during the first Gulf War. At that time, he headed a research program into the consequences of a new uranium-based weapon. After testing on behalf of the Pentagon, he became its first victim. He now suffers from several cancers and renal problems. Part of the Nevada test we did, and uh, what I'm doing is uh, blowing up, shooting and burning up. Well, what you see is the direct impact on the uranium munitions, the uranium impact, but the uranium that breaks up burns and burns and burns and burns and burns for a long time. You can see how long it lasts. He claims that uranium has been used in American munitions since 1991, in missiles, shells, and armor plating for military vehicles. And when I shot up wood 4x4s, man, they were great. <laughs> this stuff is good. Okay? I mean, you have to understand, the purpose is to kill and destroy. And uranium weapons are the ultimate, because it's a massive fireball of burning uranium fragments that are moving extraordinarily high velocity in fragments that are not burning that cause massive secondary explosions or massive fires in anything that will burn. Uranium is a mineral used in nuclear power plants. Part of it is enriched and used as fuel for the reactors. The rest is radioactive waste, known as depleted uranium. As the costs of storage are high, the U.S. Army decided to use some of it to manufacture munitions and armor plating. Doug Rock sees depleted uranium quite simply as a nuclear weapon. And yes, it is. It's solid radioactive waste. It's chemically toxic. It's radioactive, radioactive for eternity. It's a dirty bomb. And yeah, it is, yeah, let's call it nuclear for what it is. It's nuclear waste used to kill and destroy, thus contaminate air, water, soil, and food that remains there to cause harm for eternity. This weapon was used for the first time in Iraq in 1991. At the time, the U.S. Army asked Doug to inspect the tons of burnt-out Iraqi tanks destroyed by depleted uranium missiles. This is measuring the contamination on destroyed... Uh, As a result, T Doug and his team were seriously contaminated by inhaling okay. uranium dust. Today, Doug is one of the only survivors of that group. Now, I mean, you can look at me. I mean, what I looked like then, I was a lot different. Extraordinarily healthy, and now everybody's extraordinarily sick. This is me right there. Yeah, we were the best of the best. Won't lie for them anymore. It's not worth it. Too many people are sick. Too many people are dead. Since this photo was taken, 21 members of his team have died. Returning from Iraq, Doug submitted an unfavorable report on the use of depleted uranium. Well, once I told the U.S. Army that it was dangerous, we couldn't clean it up, and they couldn't do it. They sent me packing. <laughs> they said, adios amigos, you know. <laughs> We don't want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. I mean, you got your job. Keep doing things, but shut up and go away. The U.S. Army never took Doug Rock's recommendations into account. They use it in Fallujah, so you, you think there is... A... Fallujah, extensively in Fallujah, totally extensively in Fallujah. Not a question. And we see everything in all the other people. We see every place that's been used, we see it. I mean, you could try to clean it up, but you can't. That's what I tried to do, and I couldn't. That's why I told them no more. To find out more, I try to reach Colonel Peter Newell. He was in command of the Battle of Fallujah in 2004. I never managed to obtain an interview, nor would he even answer the phone. I basically can't answer your questions, but I'm letting you do my email address and you can send me your questions and you can get to The issue appears to be embarrassing. The only answer I receive is a link to the U.S. Army's internet site. This article praises the merits of depleted uranium and minimizes its dangerousness. The only allusion to health consequences is contained in this phrase. The Department of Defense and many other organizations have studied and continue to study the health, chemical, radiological, and environmental effects and exposures of depleted uranium. That's all they wrote. To the U.S. Army, the use of depleted uranium is taboo. I did manage to speak to one former high-ranking official at the Department of Defense. Bing West was with the Marines at the Battle of Fallujah. 
He later wrote a book, recognized in the U.S. as the reference on American strategy in the rebel city. You heard about uh, the defeated uh, uranium oh. and the white phosphorus? Oh. What can you say about it? It's all nonsense. Uh, depleted uranium or something, a, a bomb is a bomb. Um, it's not like somebody's leaving behind radioactive so that the Marines walk through, I mean, radioactive fields, then all the Marines die. If any scientists show a linkage between lingering health problems relative to a military weapon, then that military weapon should not be used unless there's an extraordinary reason. However, if there is a lingering problem, the first people to be affected would be the soldiers on the battlefield. And I know of no soldiers who are complaining about uranium Yet it's not that hard to find American soldiers contaminated by depleted uranium. A few kilometers from New York, Gerard, Janice, and their children are to all appearances a typical American family. You can get me tired, man. Apart from one detail, in 2003, Gerard Matthews served more than six months in Iraq. The truck driver we transported, uh, what you call like blowing up equipment, Things move around on the truck, so we have to tie it down. So that's when uh, susceptibility of being exposed or, or sleeping in that environment with your trucks, because, you know, some of the missions don't take just one day. It takes more than one day. Gerard fell ill several months later. The early symptoms seemed trivial. Standard headaches, problems with his vision, but his state quickly worsened. The beginnings of a brain tumor, renal problems, the list is long. I have... Uh, leakage and I'll show you uh, to the extent how much I have leakage today Gerard has to wear diapers but there's worse his daughter Victoria conceived after his return from Iraq has a deformed right hand this picture is a reminder of Fallujah's deformed babies his story has made headlines all over the world but Gerard isn't the only one to fall ill Eight of his comrades in arms who served in Iraq have shown the same symptoms. Urine tests reveal an abnormal concentration of uranium. I never was told about depleted uranium in the military. I never attended class. I never showed, never went to a class on how to handle the equipment that were exposed to it. I didn't even know what you depleted uranium. The last time I heard not even depleted uranium was when I took chemistry. Yeah. Gerard believes he was contaminated during his mission in Iraq. He decided to file a formal complaint against the U.S. Army, claiming it broke safety regulations by exposing him to radioactive material. His wife has gone even further. She wrote every senator and like almost every representative, and everyone was basically, um, this is just one of them she wrote, was sending back letters. At the time, even President Bush's office had taken up the issue. On behalf of President Bush, thank you for your letter. He's thanking me for the letter I wrote to him about my daughter. And he said, the White House is sending your inquiry to the following agencies, the Department of Defense, Health and Human Services, and Social Security Administration. And that's the correspondence we got from them. No assistance was provided, nor any response to these questions. I feel they owe him an apology because so, to this day, he, to an extent, he loves the Marine Corps. I, I don't understand why. But he always says that if something happens to him, he wants to be buried in his Marine Corps uniform. <clears throat> and, and that upsets me because I, I don't understand how faithful he is and how committed he is, and I have to respect his wishes. So, for me, I don't understand how the government can actually. Um, treat a man that way that still to an extent honors his country the army refuses to recognize its responsibility six months in iraq were enough to shatter the lives of gerard and his family in fallujah thousands of inhabitants still live in these buildings destroyed by american bombing seven years in a contaminated city
religious hospital is short-staffed and cruelly lacks medical equipment. Nothing can be done to save these children, so to keep evidence of their births, a photographer has been drafted in by the doctors. Why are you photographing them? Why am I photographing them? It's for our database. We try to keep it updated every month. These photos are unbearable. Most of these babies will only live for a few hours. Every month, 20 or so babies like these are born and then die in this hospital. Not to mention the countless newborns with serious illnesses. You see, most families would rather the children die. I remember one day a father said to me, each time I see my deformed son, I die. A generation sacrificed, and how many more? For these children, it's already too late. Faced with this human catastrophe, the Iraqis are powerless. But to prevent the tragedy of Fallujah from happening elsewhere, some people in Europe are starting to take action. In London, a stone's throw from the Houses of Parliament, Bunny Easton camps out on this pavement every day. He has been campaigning against the war in Iraq since 2005. His spot at the foot of Big Ben is well chosen to attract both Londoners and tourists. Behind him, photos of deformed babies are exhibited for all to see. Shocking pictures that attempt to boost public awareness. We aim to expose not just the wickedness of war, it's the wickedness of the weaponry. The shells of the bombs and rockets, the bit outer bits of the armored cars, it's all made of depleted uranium left over after they've made the atomic bombs. I mean, we've got uh, a poster there uh, entitled A Different Nuclear War. The slogan, and the slew of Iraqi baby photos, haven't managed to rally great support. But Bunny Easton isn't alone in his fight. Others are campaigning on a different scale. An NGO network, present in around 30 countries, is also campaigning for a ban on all depleted uranium weapons. Its headquarters are in Manchester. So I can maybe um, show you some of the materials that we campaign with and some of those from our other organizations. So we have uh, briefings, which because it's a very big and quite a complex issue, DU, so we try and pull together all the necessary information into an easily digestible format. This was a, a briefing which we produced for members of parliament in the UK a few years ago, so this is the national campaign, uh, and we held a parliamentary briefing there. Um, it's always a challenge to try and get the politicians up to date uh, on the issue. Douglas is all too aware of the consequences of uranium-based weapons. He has studied the subject since the Balkan War in 1994. In that time, he and his team have devised a method for identifying and decontaminating bombed zones. His first battlefield was in Bosnia, where the Americans were already using depleted uranium weapons. This is a map of a place in uh, Bosnia, which was the site where DU weapons were used in 1994-1995. But there were quite high levels of contamination at this site. So we've been doing quite a lot of work around that just to try and map where the DU has been used. In Bosnia, the organization identified 12 highly contaminated zones. This information enabled the Bosnian Environment Ministry to take steps to limit the damage. So this is one called Borovac, which was decontaminated in 2007. As you can see from here, it's a pretty extensive task that they have real problems in trying to identify the actual sites where DU is. That's a D round that's been dug up and it started to break down in the soil. Yep, so the yellow you can see on the outside is uh, uranium oxide and so with about 300 grams in each of the pen.